So, Kled versus Olaf. I'm not too familiar with the matchup. I assume that, given that it's blue side, that's naturally going to be pretty painful for Olaf uh, in the event that anyone can get a fucking freeze off against him. Okay. So he says an ignore right. So so the plan is to spam gank Olaf before he gets six, and ignore your jungle since Rexai is just going to quote me on this murder the fuck out of you in it. Huh. Well, that's a little bit uh unfortunate. A guy that doesn't know how to play top somehow is educating a jungler on how to play jungle. This is pretty. This is pretty silly by Fiddlesticks, though. Yeah, you should easily like during the loading screen. If you don't know what a champion does, then you should Google what the champion does, at least so that you have a rough idea. Whether or not you know how the champion does his combos and stuff, okay. Like maybe you need to see. All right. So Alicia's for Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks smites. One thing we can start off with, although it doesn't, I actually didn't even pay attention to how Olaf came into the lane, so this is actually a little bit bad by me. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna rewind. It looks like Olaf leashed. Um, I guess it's not gonna be very common for NA uh, Rek size to invade uh, blue, but it is a possibility. Okay, what? You're dead. You should have died. He didn't need to flash. Okay, so... Um, now, when this happens, this happens at 219. Rek'Sai just cleared red. Now, uh, Rek'Sai has, has one of two options, okay? Uh, let's make sure that everyone can see this. So, right now, um, so the minimap is right here. I know that you guys might have some trouble seeing it, but I hope that you can bear with me. Um, so right now, Rek'Sai just cleared red, unless Rek'Sai did Golem to Wraith to red. Now... Golem to Wraith to Red is really nice uh, if you have a lot of pressure on mid and top, um, or if you have the ability to match gank top or match gank mid if you think that the enemy jungler has a lot of pressure either in mid or top. So there's a lot of mind games that can go into it at the highest level um, of uh, you know jungle play. Now this type of stuff is, is not going to really be relevant at lower MMRs, it's only going to be relevant at an MMR where uh, you know the junglers are thinking a lot more um, and being a lot more proactive with potential gank paths and um, opportunities presented to them via the lanes. Um, so right now, Rek'Sai could be here, and if Rek'Sai is here, Rek'Sai could circumvent or could just basically altogether stop doing rates and come up top. Now this is this is a real possibility. Um, now the problem with this though is that Olaf's lane is in a really disadvantageous uh, position right now because the Olaf's lane is going to shove into Kled. Um, now the problem is it is Hashinshin. Um so Hashinshin might not just let the lane, f you know, run into him. Um, so that that can actually play into Rek'Sai's favor. All in all, there there's there's one of two things that can happen right now. Uh, either Rek'Sai can protect Olaf if he thinks that Fiddlesticks is going to run up to top lane, which is going to be highly unlikely because even in this position, even if Olaf doesn't have flash. Olaf's movement speed is still pretty quick, and he obviously still has an axe. So if Fiddlesticks comes up, and if Olaf just walks down right now, honestly, because Kled isn't in position to do anything, uh, it's very easy to just get a ward off. If Fiddlesticks comes up like this against a Rek'Sai, and Rek'Sai didn't try to match gank, and Rek'Sai didn't try to do a proactive uh, gank onto top lane, then what ends up happening is Fiddlesticks loses Wraith's red, loses control of right side jungle, uh, falls behind three and a half camps to Rek'Sai in total uh, after you factor in full clear um, and then loses pressure in bottom, loses pressure in mid because that's going to synergize with mid's first recall and then is going to be tunneled into having to go uh, west centric which is going to play into Rek'Sai's hands because then that'll be the favorable side for Rek'Sai given that it'll be a top lane dynamic. So Already, we're only two minutes into the game, but there's a lot of factors that are coming into play right now that you have to be cognizant of 
um, when you're even playing top lane. So right now, Hashimshin's thought process should be one of three things. Um, Rek'Sai, all right, so number one, Rek'Sai could come top, okay? Um, number two uh, should be to try to heal up as much as possible. Now, the problem with this, though, is that this is Corrupting Pot versus Doron's Blade. Um, so Doron's Blade is actually in a weird position right now, whereas Corrupting Pot, after you factor in Olaf's Lifesteal, if he elects to get that level two, um, is going to bring him to, like, this. Uh, whereas Kled, even with the, the Doron's Ring, or the Doron's Blade, I'm sorry, uh, and the inability to really use that passive too much, his HP after this potion is only going to go up to about here. Um, so now because of this, right now what Kled can do is he can actually just back up completely and recall. Now what he's going to do there is he's going to surrender like 2-3 to three CS, um, but ultimately the lane is going to be in his favor, even though Olaf is going to have about a 100 uh, superior gold recall. Uh, but that's not really gonna matter too much. Uh, number, so he has number one, Rek'Sai can come top, okay? Number two is teleport, uh, and, you know, concede a little bit of a CS, uh, a little bit of a CF's, uh, deficit to your opponent. Um, but that's fine because the lane is gonna be in a superior position. Three is try to call your jungler top lane, but we already talked about why this is ultimately going to be a very bad decision, uh, a high percentage of the time. So... That's what needs to go through his mind. Alright. Why, 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 why hit this? Huh? What, what is it doing? You, you have 300 HP right now. Okay. There is the possibility that we talked about that Rek'Sai could have came top. Now, Rek'Sai can still come top, by the way. Rek'Sai can complete Wraiths and do Scuttle Crab and look to gank top or uh, mid lane. So it, he's not out of the woods yet, and he doesn't have any sort of uh, position to get a ward off that would give him intel. Now, if Rek'Sai was top right now, he's dead. Rek'Sai did come top, and Fiddle actually matched. This is a huge victory right now for Hashinshin. Because what this does is now you know that Rek'Sai's, um, Rek'Sai's camp right here comes up in about 20 seconds, but he can't make use of that. Okay, he no longer has rates, and it's too inefficient for him to just actually run all the way to wolves. And because of that, he's also lost the ability to pressure mid, and he's lost the ability to pressure bot lane. Um, and I don't know the exact bot lane uh, matchup right now, um, but I'm gonna assume that this is probably going to be advantageous versus a, a lot of bot lane matchups that NA is likely. Seems like they have a Sivir. Uh, I can't see the support. Is that Sivir Karma? Okay, then that's gonna be beneficial. So, right here. Alright, Fiddlesticks actually matched. Perfect. Perfect fucking situation. This is like the dream scenario right now. Lane shoving into you, a laner that needs to get pressure on you, a laner that needs kill uh, kill pressure. He needs the ability to snowball. This champion is so fucking useless. He has anti-scaling basically built into him. It's, it's just a terrible champion. Um, so with that being said, the fact that Hashinshin has the lane in a position to get shoved into him, and then his jungler, who benefits uh, from basically even uh, even gold counts. Uh, and what I mean by that is Fiddlesticks versus Rek'Sai, if they have even gold numbers, Fiddlesticks is going to inherently uh, be ahead. Um, and now on top of that, we also, you know, we, we get to talk about the dynamic that Fiddlesticks is a defensive jungler uh, post-6 in this matchup. Uh, or pre six, and Rek'Sai now has lost pressure in three lanes at once. Whereas Fiddlesticks, he never really had pressure in mid, and he never really had pressure in bottom, so he's not losing anything. So, we're three minutes into the game, and Hashinshin's team has a massive fucking advantage. Now, what does he do? So the lane was being shoved into him, and then he decided it would be a good idea to, instead of having a superior positioned lane, he needed that one CS. Even though we already talked about, he should have been in love with falling down for CS. Okay, yeah, teleport right on top of the minion. That's very important.
Now this is something that he talked about. All right, now see, this is he's doing this poorly. All right, so I'm gonna educate some of you top laners right now, uh, if you're watching this, on what he should be doing here, because the, it, it's not that. Well, his intention is good, but his execution is bad. Now he just said uh, audibly, "I'm kind of fucked now, aren't I?" Even though, honestly, I mean, I I I think this is still a very fine position. Um, it, it's not the end of the world. The position is so good for him right now. And then on top of that, Olaf has 9 CS. So out of the first three waves that came to lane, there's 19 CS to be gained, okay? Olaf missed 10. Or, well, actually, he missed 11, because he, he missed one of the CS. So he missed 11, and Hashinshin missed, uh... Holy shit. Oh, man. Hashinshin missed 11, too. Oh, man. All right, so here, here's where the execution failure comes in. So what he wants to do right here is he obviously wants to pull these minions back, right? But by going this far forward, he ends up taking about 100 extra damage. Um, what he could have done is he could have pulled it up to here and then gone in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. And that basically makes these minions stutter. And it's going to be... I mean, that that's a fine position. Pulling them back this far, I don't think is as good, because it gives Olaf a lot more breathing room to actually throw his axes and break the freeze on you, given that you don't have the ability to sustain through the damage, um, you know, of, of tanking the minions constantly. So because of that, I think that this positioning that he elects to take on the lane uh, isn't as good. But it's not going to be the end of the world, so we're going to be fine. So he's auto-attacking minions right now, even though he has a freeze going on, uh, which doesn't make any sense, because he should love the situation that his lane is in right now. Alright, and now pull the, pull, pull the four melee, yeah, pull the four spellcaster minions back. Okay, this is good. This is a really, really good position right now, actually. Okay. He missed a CS. He should not have autoed that melee minion. Should not have double CS like that. Now, if Olaf, if Olaf's good right here, Olaf just farms as you know as the last hit. He does see that 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 hit by Olaf. That's actually really bad. Anything that fucks up this freeze, anything at all, is just actually horrific. He wanted. All right, now why? Who cares? Who cares that you won the trade? Because you're behind on automization, okay? You don't have teleport, you don't have flash. This laner wants the lane to be in this position, and you just hit a ton of creeps. What are you doing? What are you doing? You have the... Olaf keeps handing you the dream situation right now. Why are you hitting him? What are you doing? You have the best situation possible. Look at Olaf. He's running around with like a chicken with his head cut off. He doesn't know what to do. And he doesn't even understand that he keeps handing you a way to choke him. He's literally handing you the rope around his neck right now. And you're complaining about it. You're up 8 CS, you've almost neutralized his first blood kill. Yeah, yeah, let's just keep dueling with him. I mean, that seems... Yeah, why, why win a lane, you know? Why play fucking chess when you can play checkers, right? Because intelligent people said that. Oh, mother of God. Oh, he's gonna fucking kill you. Now, I am very... I, I, don't, I don't know his masteries, but I assume that Olaf has the 15% uh, summoner spell cooldown thing if he's ru oh no he's running fervor i i assume never mind well he could still have the 15 percent thing i think which means he would already have flash up so this is actually a very dangerous scenario
So right now he's talking about how close he was, I think, to killing Olaf, but that just doesn't make any fucking sense. Because this lane is ultimately going to just be won through CSing and through pop proper lane manipulation. Um, because if he just continues to manipulate the, way of the, the lane in a way that we were just discussing for the past five minutes, okay, we saw that A, this Olaf's range was not that high. And what I mean by range is the caliber of player that we're facing. Uh, zero being a complete novice, 100 being a complete pro. Uh, this Olaf's range is not that high on that scale, uh, because he kept handing Hashinshin a way to actually choke him and enable Hashinshin to get back into the game. However, Hashinshin didn't want to take it. Um, so basically, he was looking at, you know, life without the possibility of parole. He got a plea deal that said, okay, uh, you're only going to serve, you know, one month in prison. He's like, no, I'm going to take my chances at court or trial. You know what I mean? Like, you just give him the wide eyes. And now, obviously, this is very standard by Rek'Sai to actually come and gank. There is nothing that Fiddlesticks could have done here. Um, and Hashinshin is obviously claiming that, you know, oh, Olaf's just in front of my tower, and, um, you know, Fiddlesticks can just come and gank him. No bullshit. Fiddlesticks is level 5. Fiddlesticks does not have boots. Olaf it does have boots. Olaf is faster than said Fiddlesticks. Um, Olaf has Axe, which will slow Fiddlesticks. The fear is going to be virtually negligible. You don't know if Olaf has a ward in the river. You do not know if Scuttlecrab has been captured. You do not know where Malzahar's wards are. You do not know where if Rek'Sai has placed a pink ward in the left side river, following up after the first blood gank, which is going to award him with more gold than he should normally have at three minutes. So, there's a lot of things that you are not entertaining, uh, when talking about what your jungler should or should not be doing. So... But what we should talk about is what you should be doing in top lane, but what you always consistently fail to do. Now, Malzahar ends up going down in mid lane. And you are still continuing to duke it out, rather than trying to escape to the very bottom uh, against Rek'Sai. So, here, here's something that's very interesting. So, um, here's how this works. Uh, kill, plus, uh, kill equals 300 gold. Okay. Kill plus assist equals 450 gold. So... Let's say in a you know in another situation you just give Rexi uh, 300 gold. I do believe that 300 gold is less than 450 in the event that they get kill plus assist. But I mean that's just talking about math. Now he says really would have appreciated some help top even though he could have helped himself but he chose not to. I feel like I'm looking at like a. A person on welfare or something who like buys like iPhones and other stuff rather than you know bettering their lives or anything. Fiddlestick, Fiddlestick has not done anything. Oh, Fiddlestick has boosted swiftness. What the fuck is that? Holy shit! That's a that's a very wonky build. I mean, that's the first time that I saw Tab get hit. Although it is just after a recall, so maybe he just bought that. I'm not sure. Okay, so now Cassidy is escorted. Fiddlesticks is going to hand off blue. Now, he's saying that, I mean, I held the lane versus a pre-6 Olaf that was constantly overextended. No, he wasn't. Um, in fact, the lane was in a really bad position for a pre-6 Olaf. In fact, um, you never should have been able to die to a gank had you just played the lane properly. In fact, Olaf was so bad at CSing that had you just learned how to play the lane properly and had you executed it properly, you probably would have negated his first blood advantage through proper CSing and lane manipulation. In fact, had you actually done that, Malzahar still would have died. Uh, in fact, had you done that, you, your team and yourself would have been in a lot better position right now. In fact, even though Fiddlesticks is now west-centric, so is Rek'Sai, and the lane is now shoving into Olaf, and it's in a perfect kill spot. So now, actually, all the things that you have done have led up to uh, being a really bad situation. This is perfect. All Olaf needs to do right now is just CS with E. Or just auto-attacks. But Olaf doesn't know what he's doing. So this is the- what are you doing? Hello? They get a kill on him, but it's like, this is because the, the, the quality of gameplay here is actually so low. Okay? Olaf, look at this. Where's Rek'Sai right now? Okay, Rek'Sai's here. Rek'Sai is here or Rek'Sai's here? 100% Rek'Sai's there. Okay? 
But LS, how can you know that? Well, uh, let me explain. So Rek'Sai just lost a gank, or well, he, he won a gank in uh, mid, but then Malzahar lost uh, to a gank in mid, or he won a gank in top, Malzahar lost to a gank in mid, okay? You look at how bottom lane's playing out, you look at the in-game timer, and um, then on top of that, you just think of the logical routes that Rek'Sai is likely to take. Now, is there going to be some weird world where Rek'Sai is just on a totally another, uh, you know, playing field, and he's leveling his opponents, uh, which generally is uh, a term used in poker? Uh, means for like, you know, a leveling process, you know, they think I'm gonna do this, so I'm gonna do this, but then they know that I'm thinking that I'm gonna do this, so I'm gonna do this instead, and it ends up becoming a leveling game. Um, so obviously, in uh, very thin situations, Rek'Sai can appear at bottom. 90% of the time, or higher than 90% of the time, okay, Rek'Sai is either going to be here, or he's going to be here right about now. Um, and you can, e because of the situation that is arising, you can actually even use your own jungler as a measurement of where the enemy jungler is because of the game time. Um, so now because of that, uh, we see here that he has five spellcaster minions versus three. Um, and then he has more melee minions, he has the cannon minion here, and he's going to have uh, the worst RNG actually on the, the front line. Um, so this lane is set to actually go into Olaf, and Rek'Sai is over here, and they know that Hashinshin doesn't have a pink ward. So there, there's so many situations that are just really fucking bad right now. Um, Olaf now clearly also just warded. We don't know if it's a pink ward, we don't know if it's a green ward. There's still the possibility that there is a pink ward in between Rift Herald and mid lane inside of that tribrush from Rek'Sai, if he's high level. Now the problem is, is Olaf doesn't realize his advantage. He doesn't realize his CS advantage. He doesn't realize that he has boots versus no boots. He doesn't realize that he has phage, which ultimately also grants him the movement speed passive. Um, and then on top of that, the Qs, uh, you know, the undertoes or whatever, it's just gonna be impossible for Kled to escape if Olaf gets the lane into this sort of a position. Now, also because uh, Hashinshin doesn't have a pink ward, uh, and because you have a ward down here, it's very easy to see where does Hashinshin place this ward, and it's very easy for Rek'Sai to play around that because Rek'Sai is in your red side jungle. Uh, NA is notorious for actually uh, not playing... The, the laners don't play relative to the junglers, and the junglers don't play relative to the laners. Um, and it's something that I feel bad for for NA, uh, because the solo queue as a whole is much lower quality. Um, but if we are speaking all things considered and we are trying to analyze this objectively and actually talk about what is something realistic that could be going on, these are the type of points that you need to point out. The, these trades are just stupid as shit. It, it, it's, it's literally flipping a coin. You're like a sand gambler. I, I don't even know what the hell to say. All right, so now he shoves in the lane. This is actually fine. He should have probably killed the Rek'Sai tunnel. Okay, so Olaf teleports. That's actually a fine decision by him. Fiddle Six is actually going to Grom. Now, Fiddle doesn't have uh, ultimate, but Olaf, I don't think, has ulti either. Um, so th there's there's a chance for Fiddle Six to Bengi. Never mind, Rek'Sai uh, appears on Fiddle Six Blue Side Jungle. So now... Kled is on his own. This gank is wonky, uh, and this is primarily weird just because Kassadin's lethal. What? So wait a minute, he just says to Fiddlesticks, I don't give a fuck about your jungle. Okay, you're gonna get Malzahar ulted. Why do you flash? You can never live there. He said, I thought I could get one more auto into a queue. That doesn't fucking do anything. In fact, what this roam does right now is you have an Olaf that is on tilt and doesn't know how to properly play a lane, even though his team is, well, he's winning really hard in top lane, nothing's happening in bottom lane, and Malzahar is just actually going to scale much better than Akasid, and, Um So ultimately, Olaf's team is winning. Um... So what happens here is Olaf teleports, and then Kled elects for a roam on mid- Holy shit, there's CS. Holy shit. Not ju not even- not even just fucking in top lane. 56 at 8 minutes and 63. Oh man, bless these souls. Alright, well... 
Okay, so he teleports top lane. He's obviously going to undertow, shove the wave. So now, if Kled roams mid lane... Now, by the way, this Malzahar plays really poorly. Um, because this this roam should never work. I don't, I don't even know what he's actually thinking. Because even if they kill Malzahar, they don't have the damage to take mid turret. Okay. They do have the option to capture Inferno Drake. But now, the question arises, is Inferno Drake worth missing three waves in top, plus giving up first blood tower unless his plan is to get a kill mid and then teleport back top then having the lane in his favor even that isn't really going to be so strong because then he's still going to lose teleport advantage uh around the the 13 minute or 12 13 minute mark for bottom lane so this was just a terrible decision overall and his decision to flash is even worse because you can never you can never live there. There's absolutely zero ways to live. Raxai is just everywhere. What? What are you doing? Oh my god, Olaf botched it. He should just die. He should always just die there. Olaf botched mechanically. What the fuck? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Apparently... Apparently, according to, hold on, I gotta, I gotta go to my dashboard. So apparently, I am not on league, which I did not know. Give me one second. What the fuck? Alright, I, I had to fix that. I'm sorry, guys. I had to fix that. I'm so sorry. Alright, let's get back to this. They have no idea what they're doing. Like, these trades. Now, he should always lose the trade, but Olaf just... Alright, I have to mute that. He should always lose the trade. 100%. And now he's complaining that Fiddlesticks did golems, but... I don't know. Fids, he doesn't have alt. That was so free. Okay, so he's 1-3-1. They both have absolutely pitiful CS. I mean, it's still a fine game. Now he's going to recall. This is fine play. Rek'Sai is now shown on the right-hand side of the map. He doesn't even click. He doesn't even click Rek'Sai to see, you know, maybe is there a Wraith Camp buff active on her? Is there a, you know, is there a, a Golem buff active on her? You know what I mean? What's her HP? Is it likely that maybe she's rooting top? You know, is, she, is it likely that she's rooting bottom? Like, zero intel. I don't think I've ever seen him click at other lanes. And now he just pings that he's going bottom. Okay, well... Rek'Sai. 
Rek'Sai. So the, the, the play here is always Rek'Sai, Inferno Drake, mid, mid tower, rotate top, eat two waves. Always the play. Always, 110% of the time, that is the play. It's always the play. It's, it, it is always, 110% of the time, the play. I would, I would bet any amount of money on that. Unless there's, like, info that I don't have that I can't see from the minimap. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me watch the minimap a little bit more closely. Just, just so I can make sure. So there is uh, two waves crashing into top lane that are going to collide with this wave right here. And then it's still going to take them about 45 seconds before they... They're going to collide with one more minion wave before it goes into the tower. So we have Olaf, who's about to come down. Fiddle's fucking... Fiddle, Fiddle, do you not... Hello? Alright, so I'll, I'll give him credit right here. Fiddle Sticks is completely blind. He's cosplaying Lee Sin right now. Olaf's in mid. Malzahar showed coming down to river. So if they kill Rek'Sai, there's no smite contestion. You get Inferno Drake, which is absolutely fucking just beautiful for everyone. Okay. You get the wave in bottom. You shove out enemy bottom. You then go to mid lane. You put Malzahar under pressure. You also simultaneously uh, attack his blue. And you demand that Olaf have to be mid, thus giving you a perfect lane in top. It doesn't matter about canceling your ult, you should just go on Rek'Sai. Maybe you should what? Alright, that comment I think is pretty unnecessary. Honestly, Hashinjin not having items is completely irrelevant. Because the, the play itself was actually fine, but the execution was, was poor. And now he's shoving a lane back into... What the fuck is going on? Here's a reality check too. This Olaf fucking sucks. And he's going for these plays. Try this against an actual Olaf. You're gonna get straightened up real quick. You're gonna be like fucking Jeffrey Dahmer with a broomstick up your ass, except it's gonna be an axe from Olaf. He'll give you a real he'll give you an undertow. He might even give you a wraparound too if he's generous. So even if this gank works right here, what ends up happening is they lose top tier 2. So it doesn't matter. Alright, Olaf backed off anyway. So I'm just going to pretend top doesn't exist. Okay. Olaf has 2k gold on- wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Let's see if that's actually true. Hold on. When did he say that? Fourteen nineteen. Thirty one CS. It's about six hundred and fifty gold. A thousand from the tower. Uh, no, Olaf has about uh, Olaf has about sixteen hundred gold on you. What? Wait, no, Olaf doesn't even have that. Wait, no, Olaf has about fourteen hundred on him. Yeah, Olaf has about fourteen hundred on him. No, 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 look, look, look. People in the chat that are like, 66 CS, 14 minutes, what the fuck, no. CS, at this, at this level gameplay, okay, CS is always relative to game flow. You can't be an idiot that's like, oh my god, 20 minutes, 90 CS, what fucking idiots, no. Look, there are pro games, okay, that you can find on Korean solo queue ladder, where Apto, Faker, Crown, you know, fuck, name any mid that you want, okay? Sometimes they have 100 CS on Victor at 20 minutes, and it's because the game is so chaotic. Now, Hashinshin has roamed multiple times, and not only that, he has roamed in a situation in which he would not be able to collect any CS, even if the roam was successful. His CS being 68, it's a little bad. Could it be a little bit higher? Sure. Could it be at about 100? Yeah, that's still 40 CS under par of the 10 CS per minute. But, relative to how he's playing, it's actually not completely atrocious the way that some people in chat are trying to make it seem. It's really not. Well, okay, yeah, the CSing in bot lane was absolutely atrocious, but that's not what people are critiquing right now. They're, they're critiquing that he has 68 farm at 14 minutes and they are leaving out how that occurs. Do not try to fight him. Holy shit, he did something right for once. Stop shoving, we need to hold for gank. I don't think that's... I mean, they, they, they shouldn't... Well, they might get that. Oh, heal comes at Karma. Nice champ, holy shit. Yeah, we should just FF. It's 5 to 10. I mean, the game... When you factor in the enemy's scaling versus their scaling, it's pretty bad. Uh... It's pretty, yeah, okay, so 5 to 10 is not normally, it's, it's not just 5 to 10. There, there's a lot of other stuff. Alright, well that comment by him is just stupid. He, he single-handedly lost the lane by himself. In fact, the, the few things that Fiddlesticks did do for him in top lane was just, it, it was actually game-shattering. But he didn't take advantage of it. You just need to respect your opponent. You literally just don't res you literally just don't respect him. I sat under turret and used my Q to No, you did not. No, 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 no. Used your Q to fight him and break your freeze four times in a row. Are we playing the same game? Well, we play a game called League of Legends, but we do not look at the same game. You're dead anyway, I don't know why you flash. Oh! No. Alright, now, they got a kill in mid lane. 
Uh, and they're gonna get a tower. So this isn't the worst. I'm the guy that sat under my turret literally the entire laning phase, only to get siege down. No. No, 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 no. Let's not have cognitive fucking dissonance or something. Like, you had multiple opportunities to freeze the lane in an advantageous position, and you chose to instead constantly play Street Fighter Eight with your opponent. That is not Fiddlesticks' fault. You didn't hold the lane. You and you you constantly broke the freeze. Olaf does not carry hard. Olaf gets a few kills and then he just dies later. Olaf's a bad champion. If Olaf were a good champion, you might actually see it picked in the best regions in the world. Yeah. And yet, the best champions for top lane right now are, in no order, Echo, Gangplank, Fiora. Olaf is like one of three champs that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jack. Well, that's funny, because a lot of champions just shit on Jack's late game. See, like, I, I, I don't understand why he, he talks in such a, uh, in such a manner that it, le it intentionally leaves out detail. Like, Olaf didn't just sit under, uh, like, in front of his tower. Olaf, Olaf played the lane wrong. Olaf continuously gave him the ability to freeze the lane. He didn't take it. Olaf traded poorly due to poor mechanics, and yet it was still going to be fine because Shinshin has no damage foresight. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And he can't say that Olaf was necessarily even playing wrong because we don't know if there was a pink ward in River. We don't know what was warded in River. We don't know where Rek'Sai was. Well, I mean, we know where Rek'Sai was a, a, a high majority of the time. But... Can't play solo queue like that. Hashinshin, do you ever get replays and watch them yourself after you calm down? He says no. Both out loud and in game. I mean, I, I think we, we could have deduced that. This may actually be... This might be the worst case of Dunning-Kruger Syndrome since the Rain Man. And you know what? You know what's worse? Is I actually want, I, I want to help the guy. In, in all seriousness, I, w I would find it so fun and exciting to see him properly play a laning phase and to actually learn how to abuse, you know, the, 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 the fucking minutia of the lane, like the details and shit.
No, not welcome to top lane. You don't know how to play top lane. You play Street Fighter 8. The thing is, he, he's talking about a point in the game in which we already uh, had realized that he should have backed off. Top's not the easiest, jungle's the easiest. No, that's not why Rek'Sai came top. We already deduced the reasons why Rek'Sai went top. You had the lane handed to you three times in under 10 minutes, and you didn't handshake on any of it. I win top, and then I win the map. No, you don't win the map with your TP. That that's not how top lane actually works in solo queue. This is not competitive. Even if it were competitive, I, th I think that there is more than enough evidence to advocate the fact that the lane does not matter to the same degree that he is suggesting that it matters. Alright, I mean, this game's over, this VOD is basically over. He he misplayed the lane in a hundred different ways in the first fucking 12 minutes of the game. Um, we, we saw everything. Uh, his objective reasoning, which he, he goes over, uh, if you click uh, this thing where it highlights him going over it, you'll notice that he intentionally skips over his botching of the laning, uh, or, or of the minions, or the, the manipulation of the minions in the laning phase, and he instead tries to claim that his trading uh, was superior and decisions that he was making was good, even though we, we already know it was horror bad at the very end. So that's the review of this VOD. I hope that you guys actually learned a lot from it. Um, you know, we, we didn't get to touch on a lot of stuff, but I, th this is just actually absurd. I think that there, there's a lot more to teach when people are adamant about uh, them being right when it's very very easy to go back and reverse engineer and see that they were wrong And you know what I want to help Pashinchin too. I, I really do but I mean the guy makes fucking asinine like claims and con like I, I don't even know I, I After the whole dominate thing people thought I was like bullying him or attacking him. That, that's not the case at all um, the problem is, though, is he is the current spotlight for a player that can actually play very poorly, but not bad enough to constantly fall. So he hovers between this MMR range uh, that people attribute as being good, but it, it's really not good. Um, 